we're going to look at how to complete a three variable kmap. Okay, three variable kmaps are going to follow a similar principle as a two variable. We're just going to increase the size of it. Now, when we increase the size, there's going to be two different orientations on how you can draw the kmap. One orientation, let's call it a vertical orientation. And on the vertical orientation, we'll have one variable in the column area. And then we'll place two variables into the rows items. Now there is gonna be an important note of how we fill in the rows. Uh, how we're gonna fill in the rows is gonna look a little bit different in that when we fill in the rows, we are gonna write down the bits with one bit of change. Now the reason we're gonna do this one bit of change is this leads to what we talked about last time, the easy reduction. That I wanna see something like A, B, C, with an A, B, C bar, quick reduction. I can cross out this, you know, C. Okay, so how we're gonna do this is you start off with zero, zero. You're gonna change the bit on the, the right. So you go to zero, one. Then you're gonna get one bit change, which will go down to one, one. And then we'll go down to one, zero. So that's one way we can write it. Another way we can do a three bit is we can do like a horizontal orientation. We're gonna have two variables for the columns and one for the row. And again, we're gonna write down the bits with one bit change as well. So we go zero, 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 one, 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 zero. Now, it's really gonna be up to your preference on do you like to use the vertical style, the horizontal style, either way still works the exact same method. Okay, so let's talk about how we fill in this uh, K-map. And when we fill in the K-map, we are looking at each value inside this box being a midterm or a max term. So one box holds a midterm or a max term. Okay, so how we're gonna do that is, if we look inside this box, I can break down this box as being labeled A, B, C. And I'm gonna look to see what numbers fit that box. So in this box, we see A is a zero, B is a zero, C is a zero. If we go over to the right, we see that A is a one, B is a zero, C is a zero. The next one would be zero, zero, one. Then we have one, zero, one, zero, one, 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 one. Then the bottom would be zero, one, zero, and then one, one, zero. So now if we have these binary numbers, we can say the binary number is gonna match a midterm or a max term. So let me just do it on the side over here. So zero, 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 this would be little m zero or a big M zero. We had zero, zero, one, or that's little m one, big m one. Let's drop down to the one that's highlighted. That's zero, one, zero. Well, that's little m two, big m two. And then little m three, big m three. So we see that because we switched the value of one, one with one, zero, 
we count zero, one, we skip two, and then we go back for three. Then we'll go do four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's how we can fill in the, the K maps. All right, so let's take an example and let's see how we can fill in K maps. All right, so let's say we have ABC. Now, when we fill these in, we're not skipping any bits, we're going straight binary number counting. And let's say we are doing zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, one. All right, so let's find midterms. Which midterms do we have? We have little m1, little m2, little m6, and a little m7. Okay, so we take that, and then we're gonna fill it in. All right, so let's take these values. I'm gonna put it in red just so we know what or the little m's are. That's little m1, little m2, little m6, little m7. So that's where those values are. Those are the ones that are gonna get ones. Everything else had a zero, so we'll put zeros in for everything that remained. Okay, so you gotta kind of fill in the K map. You got to identify what the midterms are. Likewise, you might have your equation like ABC is midterms zero, one, two, six. And then let's go ahead and add in don't cares. And let's say we have don't cares four and five. All right, so let's see how we can do this. Let's draw out our K map. Now, when we draw out our K map, let's identify our spots, little m0, little m1, little m2, little m6. Okay, those are gonna be our ones. Then we have four and five as don't cares. A little m4, little m5, we have those as our don't cares. Now what remains are zeros. Okay, so we did the vertical. Let's see what happens if we want to do the horizontal method. If we're looking at the horizontal method, remember again, we're putting ABC. <clears throat> so if we do ABC, that's zero, zero, zero. Zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero, one, 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 zero, one. Well, what does that come out to be? If we fill it in with the midterms, it ends up being M0, M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, M7. Okay, so let's fill one in. Let's say we have F of ABC is midterms one, five, one, four, and five. If I don't care of zero and three. Okay, so let's draw out that K map. Okay, so let's just scroll up a little bit. We need a M0 for a don't care. We see zero is the top box. Let's drop that in. We have a don't care at three. Let's drop that in. See, we're just trying to match with what's up on top. 
right? I have a one, I have a four, I have a five, everything else would come out to be zeros. Okay, so we can see how we can fill it in. Now what we've got to look at is how do I make reductions? Uh, so we know how to fill it in. How to make reductions is the next item we need to look at. And the way we can make reductions, I'm going to draw a couple of different diagrams out. I'm going to show you a couple of different cases. It's going to be similar to the two variable in that we're looking for items that are adjacent. So we're going to do four examples. I'm going to show bigger groups being grouped each time. Okay, so let's start off with something that is a single one by itself. So we can do a group of one. A group of one, this one here has nothing adjacent to it that is a one. I group that. We are gonna look at what every variable is. That's A, B, C. We're doing midterm, so it's all A bar, B bar, C bar. Maybe we have something that looks like this. Well, that will be, I can do a group of two. Group of two, these two are adjacent. We only can circle or box up items that are adjacent to each other. So this group of two, we're gonna see what changes. We look at A, one box, is A of zero and one box is A of one. A change, A is not part of our answer. So then we're gonna look at B and C that remain the same. So that's a B bar because B is a zero and then C because C is a one. The next item we can do <coughs> is we can do what is a group of four. We have to have four items that are all adjacent to each other. So let me start as I circle it in. The top one is adjacent to the, to the one below it, which is adjacent to the one below it, adjacent to the one below it. That is a group of four that we can do. Now we're gonna look to see what bits state the same. A state the same for all four of those. So we have an A. B and C, we use every single item in every column. They all change. So there is no other variable. One thing I want you to note is look at the sizes of these items. A group of one had three variables. We increase it to a group of two. We drop the variable. We increase to a group of four. They drop to another variable. Now, in our setups, some items are not allowed to be grouped. This is a common mistake that I see on a number of students. Yeah, some people think, oh, here I got a group of six. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, this is not allowed. Our possible groupings for three variables is a group of one, a group of two, or a group of four. You cannot have a group of six, cannot have a group of three, cannot have a group of five. It has to be one of these items. Okay, so with that, sometimes we're gonna have, maybe we do have three items that are next to each other. Well, what do we do with that? 
you know, let's say we have one, one, and a one. Well, I can't group three together, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two terms. I'm going to say this one right here is adjacent to the one next to it. That's one term. So I can say this is, let's call this output F. I would say F is A change, B and C didn't. So that's a B bar, C bar. And then I'm going to get another term and I'm going to group it here in green. And that covers that A state the same. So that's an A bar, C change. It went from a zero to a one. So that's just a B bar. You know, here, let's do another example. Let's say I have a group of four. We always do the largest group possible. So in here, I have a group of four. I'm going to group all four together because that's allowed. And I'll say, you know, F is B bar in this case. A change, C change, you're left with B. In this case, only for this case right here, you know, we, even though you can group groups of one and two together, we would not do this. So this we avoid because it has two terms. The lower number of terms is best. Okay, so we're always gonna try to do the largest grouping. Now, what is unique is when I have items that we can say um, wrap around. So adjacent means there is only one bit that is different. So here, if I have this case right here, I can say this one wraps around and becomes adjacent to the one above it. Because in those two terms, the two terms are, I have a zero, 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 and then a zero, one, zero, but it's one bit difference. This is adjacent. So what is the term here? The term is A state the same, so that's A bar. B change, it went from a zero to a one, C stayed zero, zero, so C bar. Likewise, you can have it, you can have a group of four that wraps around. Okay, so if you have a group of four wraps around, let's say I have at the ends, I can say, okay, this two are adjacent to those two. What is my term? A changed on both of them, B changed on both. That's just a C bar. Now, what is gonna happen is as we start doing these three variables, what happens with the don't cares? So don't cares become a little unique in that you do not need to group them. You group a don't care only if it helps, re makes a larger group. Okay, so let's do for the following, let's say I have a one, a one, a one, an X, and an X. 
Well, in this case, this green don't care helps us. It helps us in that, you know what? That allows me to have a group of four. Well, that group of four is A change, C change, B did not change. And then this purple one, if we leave it a zero, no additional group. If we make it a one, it adds a term. And remember, our key item is less terms, better. So in this case, we do not use it. It's there if it helps us. We don't always have to use the, the don't care. Other items you want to do is you always are going to look for the smallest number of terms. So let's say I have something like the following. Items that you kind of want to start working on is, you know, how to determine what to group. Grab one of them and make a note. So let's say here, this green item. It has one possible pair. What pair does it have? It can connect to what's below it. Okay, this purple one here, it has two possible pairs or groups. It could be more than just a single term. It can group to what's above it. It can group to what's to the right. This one in red, two pairs. It can group to the left. It can wrap around and group to the top. And then, let me add another color in here. We have this orange item. Well, orange here has one pair. It can group and wrap around. So we want to select. So how do we determine what to group? Select the terms with one possible term first. Always do that. That's going to be a key. All right, so let's rewrite this out so we can see what we're going to group. So what are we going to group? Going to group this item because it had one possible term. What is that? A state the same, so that's A bar. B state the same, that's B. C change, so we do not write it. We do the wraparound item. A state the same, so that's an A. B change, one was a zero, one's a one. C state the same, zero, zero, so that's C bar. So we're always going to look to grab items that have one pair. Now, if we had something like the following, let's say we have a one, a one, a one, and a one. Okay, we identify ID terms with one pair. This item has one pair. This item has one pair. The other two have two pairs. You know, this one right here can connect two different directions. This one can connect in two different directions. Okay, so that has two pairs. So we're not looking at those first. 
So what we're going to do is you group items that have one pair. I'm going to group this one. What is that? That's A bar B. Then I'm going to group this one. It is A B. The first one was, sorry, is A, A bar C. Okay. Once you grouped items that have one's pairs, you check to see if any ones are left ungrouped. If so, keep grouping. Else stop. So in this case, what are we gonna do here? We're gonna stop. Everything has been grouped. There's not an item that does not have a single one left. All right, so that's how we start doing three variables. Next time, we're going to increase it one more and get down to four variables.